All right, Chodesh Tov. So we're going to do today chapters 10 and 11 of Tanya. Now, in chapters 2 to 5, we explained the godly soul, the nefesh elokit, right? It is a part of Hashem. It thinks about Hashem, understands Hashem, loves Hashem, fears Hashem, acts for Hashem, learns Torah. Everything's for Hashem. And then we talked about the animal soul, chapters 6, 7, and 8. And there we explain that the animal soul, which comes from Klippa, is essentially a selfish being. Not necessarily evil in the regular sense, but just self selfish. It's a biological creature that thinks about itself. And then yesterday, in chapter 9, we discussed the struggle between the godly soul and the animal soul. And we compared it to a city, the body being the city, and the godly soul and the animal soul being two kings, each fighting over full control of the city. Right? We explained the godly soul wants the body to be in complete service of Hashem because it's a part of Hashem. And the animal soul wants everything in the body to be just about the self. But we explain not because it actually wants you to behave badly and selfishly, but because it is hired by Hashem to challenge you so you can prove deeper strength. This is what we explained yesterday in chapter 9. Remember this? So now we get into chapter 10 and 11. Before we get to that, the next um, five chapters, 10, 11, 12, and 13, the next four chapters, are going to be discussing different levels of success in this struggle between the godly soul and the animal soul, between the part of me that wants to just serve Hashem selflessly and the part of me that wants to serve the self selfishly. Different levels of success. And they're divided into three categories. And these are three categories we mentioned already back in chapter 1. What are the three categories? Three different types of people. Tzaddik, Rasha, and Benini. The Tzaddik, the good person, the perfect person. Rasha, the wicked person. And Benini, the person who's in the middle. The average. Right? And right away in chapter 1, the Alter already told us that the moment the person does a sin, he's already a Rasha. Right? So how do we define someone who's a Benini? And there we explained that the Tzaddik, Rasha, and Benini is not just a question of how you behave. Because the moment the person behaves badly, it's a Rasha. The question is about how they feel. The Tzaddik is somebody who doesn't even have any instinct or desire to do anything that's not for Rasha. The Rasha has desires to not serve Hashem, desires to serve the self, and actually does sometimes behave selfishly and sometimes even go down to doing things Hashem doesn't want. So who is the Benini? The Benini is somebody who has desires to serve himself. He has desires to do things that aren't good, but controls himself. So the Tzaddik and the Benini, if you looked at their behavior, might look exactly the same. The Tzaddik and the Benini. Their, their behavior looks the same. They're both only doing mitzvahs. They're both not doing any sins. What's the big difference? The difference is what's going on inside. The tzaddik doesn't even have any feelings or desires to do something that's not for Hashem. And the benedict does and he controls it. So now that we know what the godly soul the bat and the animal soul is, now we can revisit and understand what's really going inside the tzaddik. Right, we mentioned, we talked about before, that even the tzaddik has an animal soul. Right? Otherwise, he can't eat, sleep, have children, can't function as a regular human being. Right? That's what Alter said in chapter 2. In chapter 1, every Jew, Tzaddik, Rasha, Benini, has two neshamas. Godly soul, animal soul. So even the Tzaddik has an animal soul. So what does it mean when we say that the Tzaddik is at the point where he has no desires to do anything that's not for Rasha? What does that mean? If he, already, if he also has an animal soul. No? Anybody? So there's two levels of tzaddik, generally, which means there's two ways in which the tzaddik gets to the point where he has no desires to do anything that's not for Hashem. It's very, very subtle, which means the difference is very hard to find, but there is a distinction. And here's the difference. 
We'll get there in a second. One level of a tzaddik is, Ben is going to come tomorrow. Today we're doing tzaddik in Russia, which is chapter 10 and 11. And then 12 and 13 we'll do tomorrow, which is the Benini. So one level of a tzaddik is like this. His love for Hashem, his godly soul's feelings to want to serve Hashem is so powerful, is so, so powerful, that his animal soul's desire to be selfish is completely and fully asleep. Completely inactive. So in his feelings of his own life, he never ever feels like he wants to do anything that's not for Hashem. That's one level of a tzaddik. So again, his love for Hashem is so great that the feelings that his animal soul has to serve himself, to be selfish, is completely inactive. It's completely asleep. It's one level. Another level of a tzaddik is like this. He has gone so far in his feelings for Hashem that even his animal soul loves Hashem too. And even his animal soul doesn't want to be selfish, only wants to serve Hashem. Right? Remember we said before that the animal soul isn't bad. Right? The animal soul is just about the self. So if you can get to the point where I understand and feel that it's even best for me to serve Hashem, then even the animal soul is going to be on board. Even the animal soul is going to want to serve Hashem because it's all about the self. And if it's best for itself to serve Hashem, then so be it. Let's think of this. Sorry? In a way, let's think of this a different way. It's like if you... So you're saying it's a little bit selfish because the animal soul is thinking, I, what's best for me is to serve Hashem. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're saying, right? right. Good point. So let's think of it a different way. Sorry? We pray for Palm or something. That's a good point. We're gonna, I want to discuss that afterwards. But this is a good question. Why is it not selfish for the tzaddik? So let's think of it this way. There are two ways of feeling love for Hashem. There's a few ways, but let's, for now, there's two ways. And we talked a little bit about when we learned chapter 8. What's the feeling of love? The feeling of love is, I want to get close. I want to get close. When you say, I want to get close, what does that mean? It means you're a little bit far away. And I want to get close. Right? What does it mean to be close and far from Hashem? Hashem is somewhere in the sky. He's not here. So what does it mean close or far? Close or far means how much of me is not thinking about Hashem and how much of me is thinking about myself. If there's a part of me thinking about us, myself, then I'm far from Hashem because there's a whole part of me that's not connected to Him. Right? Then I'm far. But if there's no part of me that's not thinking about Hashem, then I'm not far. I'm close. So now let's take this to the two levels of the tzaddik. One level of the tzaddik is he loves Hashem so much, his godly soul is so powerful that his animal soul is asleep. But his selfish self is still there. It's just asleep. Which means there's a part of him that isn't absolutely one with Hashem. So what's his love to Hashem? I want to get closer. So there's a little part of him that's not connected yet and he says, I want to get closer. Feel it? See it? But then if you get to the point where even my animal soul wants to serve Hashem, so even my conscience, myself, there's no part of me that doesn't, want to, that doesn't want to be serve Hashem. Am I far from Hashem? There's no far, because there's no part of me that's not part of it. Every single part of me is part of this service serving Hashem. So what kind of love is this? It's what Tanya calls the love of delight. He's loving just enjoying it. He's just enjoying being in Hashem's presence. Because there's nothing else. It is myself, but there's nothing else. Let me put it this way. When there's me and I want to get close, then there's a me, there's Hashem, and I want to get closer. But if there's nothing else but the service of Hashem, then of course it's all me, because the tzaddik didn't pass away. He's still a living person. 
but, there, but him, there's nothing else of him but serving Hashem. So is, if you think about it like this, is a car a selfish being? It's not a being. It's not a being. It just does what I want. It's a vehicle to do what I want. That's what the higher level of tzaddik is like. Because every single part of him is serving Hashem, even his animal soul. So there's nothing else but Hashem, even though it's him. You follow? The question is the car itself. What? I want to answer that second. I want to answer that later. But first, I want to discuss the tzaddik. But you following? So the lower level of tzaddik has a burning desire to want to get close to Hashem. Even though there's some part of him that's not perfectly connected to Hashem, but that part of him is sleeping. The higher tzaddik is so deeply connected to Hashem, there's no part of him that isn't connected. He's like a car that Hashem drives to get what Hashem wants done. There's no part of him that feels selfish and separate from Hashem. Another way of thinking about this is like this. The lower level of tzaddik, he serves Hashem, why? Because he wants to get closer. The higher level of tzaddik, why does he serve Hashem? Not because he wants to get closer, he's already close. There's no, there's no distance between him and Hashem. So why does he serve Hashem? Because Hashem wants him to serve him. Hashem wants the mitzvah. See? One is, I'm doing a mitzvah because I want to get closer. That my whole feelings, the only feelings I have, this is the lower tzaddik, the lower level of a tzaddik, which is way higher than I can possibly imagine in my life. But this lower level of tzaddik is so intensely wanting and loving Hashem that he says, I want to do everything I possibly can to get closer and closer and closer to Hashem. The higher tzaddik doesn't even have a distance. There's no part of him that's not connected to Hashem. So why is he doing mitzvahs? Oh, because Hashem wants a mitzvah, so I'll do a mitzvah. So it's less selfish in that way. Even though his animal soul is, still on, is also on board. Because every single part of him is only serving Hashem, then everything he does is, oh, because Hashem wants. The lower tzaddik, why am I serving Hashem? Because I want to get closer. See the difference? Yeah, but uh, like tzaddik is actually the God. Hmm? God is going to be uh, or God, right? God is going to be, yeah. So people, tzaddik, if you think about it, it's yeah. kind of selfish if, they, if they're paying just to go there. That's true. If, then it's not a real tzaddik. If he's motivated by, if a person's motivated by, I want to get Ganeden, I want to get a reward, that's not a real tzaddik. A real tzaddik is somebody who won two levels. Either I really want to get closer to Hashem, one level of a tzaddik, or another level of a tzaddik is I'm already one with Hashem. I'm only serving Hashem because Hashem wants me to serve Him. Like a car that drives because the person pressed the pedal. Doesn't think I want to get closer to my owner and that's why I'm going to let the, the guy drive me. That's not how a car thinks. Doesn't think at all. It, it's there just to serve the owner of the car. So that's how tzaddik, a higher level of tzaddik is. There's no him that wants to get closer to Hashem. He is just there to do what Hashem wants, like a car, like a vehicle. That's right. He still has to eat, drink, and sleep. But his eating and drinking and sleeping is only, solely, because Hashem wants him to eat, sleep, sleep and drink. Right. The, the, he quotes the Gemara, which says, I think it was Hillel who said, before he would eat, he would say, oh, I got to go feed that body. Not, I'm hungry. I have to go feed that body. There's a body here that needs to serve Hashem, so I'm going to go feed it. That's how attached he was to Hashem, that even his hunger wasn't, I'm hungry. It's, there's this thing Hashem needs me to feed, so I'm going to go feed it. Talking about his own body. That's a higher, higher level of tzaddik. Here's one more way the Altarabah says we can see a difference between lower and higher tzaddik. And this is probably the easiest way. Because everything we said till now is very subtle. To make a distinction between someone who loves Hashem because I want to get closer, or someone who loves Hashem so much that all he wants to do is just serve, it's very hard to see these differences. But there's another way to see the difference, and this is probably the easiest one. How much does this tzaddik hate the idea of doing something not for Hashem? Both tzaddiks, the higher tzaddik and the lower tzaddik, both of them have no interest in doing anything that's not for Hashem. Because their animal soul is either sleeping or just completely in serving Hashem. But either way, they have no, their only feelings are, I want to serve Hashem. But the question is, how much do they hate the idea of not serving Hashem? How much do they hate the idea? Let's think about this. If you're the lower level of tzaddik, where your animal soul is there, but it's sleeping, so do you hate the idea of not serving Hashem? No. Because my animal soul is still there, so I don't hate that idea. It's just sleeping. So I don't feel interested in serving myself, but I don't hate the idea of serving myself. A higher level of tzaddik, where there's nothing else but serving Hashem. Because even his animal soul is serving Hashem. 
So the idea of thinking of doing something not for Hashem, he hates that. Right, but the question is, is the animal soul doing it like a selfish thing? Or is it doing it because the godly soul wants it to talk and, sir, and learn Torah? Right? So in the higher level of tzaddik, where he's not even, I want to get closer to Hashem. He's not far from Hashem. He's one with Hashem. Even his animal soul is one with Hashem. So for him, the idea of doing something that's not for Hashem is like, makes him want to throw up. That's how deeply one he is with Hashem, that the very idea of doing something not for Hashem is something he cannot stand. Clear? Is that clear? Right. And here's the thing. The higher and deeper someone loves something, the more someone cannot stand the idea of going against it. You know this, there's this, it's a funny thing. In families, right, people are okay poking fun at each other. Right? People are okay poking fun at each other in families. Because we know it's a lot of love. But when somebody else pokes fun up at my family, can't do that. Right? Why is that? Why, why can't I stand that? Because the love for my family is so deep that the idea of somebody else hurting my family, even just in words, I, 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 I can't do it. That's how deeply, there's no part of me that doesn't love my family. There's no part of me. Every single part of me, it's not like, you know, 90% of my family, I love my family. 10%, I don't like them. Every single part of my family loves, every single part of me loves my family. Even the part of me that makes fun of my family also loves my family. Right? And if somebody else does that, makes fun of my, I can't stand that. That's how deeply the higher level of tzaddik is connected to Hashem. He's so one with Hashem. Every single part of him is one with Hashem. Even the part that eats, sleeps, and drinks is one with Hashem. To the point that the idea of doing something against Hashem cannot stand the idea, hates the idea. Whereas the lower tzaddik loves Hashem very deeply. And because he loves Hashem very deeply, has no feelings or no interest in doing something that's not for Hashem, but doesn't hate the idea. The idea of not serving Hashem doesn't hate it. Following? Because not every single part of him loves Hashem. There's one part of him that doesn't love Hashem, but it's sleeping. That's the animal soul in the lower tzaddik, which is asleep. Is that clear? So that's chapter 10. Chapter 10 of Tanya gives us two levels of a tzaddik. One level of a tzaddik, who is the higher level of a tzaddik, where there's no part of him that's not connected to Hashem. And his love of Hashem is just enjoying being one and serving Hashem, like a car serving the person who drives it. Whereas the lower tzaddik, sorry? And he hates the idea of doing something not for Hashem. Whereas the lower tzaddik is someone who loves Hashem and wants to get closer. The part of him that doesn't serve Hashem is asleep. It's not active. And the idea of not serving Hashem is not something he hates, even though Chas Shalom is never going to go there. And he's not even interested in doing something not for Hashem. But he doesn't hate it. Clear? Okay. And this is what we mentioned in chapter 1, the two levels of the tzaddik. The complete tzaddik or the incomplete tzaddik? The complete tzaddik is somebody who has no selfishness less. Even the animal soul is only serving Hashem. The incomplete tzaddik, the lower level of tzaddik, is somebody who has an animal soul, but the animal soul is asleep. Well, they both have an animal soul, but the animal soul's desires for the self is still around, it's just asleep. Clear? Okay. Now we get to the chapter 11, which discusses the rasha. The one who is wicked. So we said before, and the Alter told us in chapter 1 already, at the moment a person does a sin, they're a Russia. Which means, a person who is capable of doing a sin once a month, is that person a tzaddik? Certainly not. A tzaddik is incapable of doing a sin. He has no interest. Even lower level of tzaddik. A bainani, also not, because a bainani is in full self-control. So a person who is capable of doing a sin once a month, or once a year, and not even a big sin, the smallest sin. A person is capable of doing a sin once a year only by thinking something negative. That's a good question. We're going to put that aside for now. That's a good question. But let's just, let's just think. That's a good question. We'll put that aside for now. But let's think of this. If a tzaddik is someone who has no interest in doing sin, okay, a ben is someone who is in full self-control, okay, 
than a rasha that means somebody who does who is capable of doing a sin once a year in his thought is what? is a rasha a very high level rasha that's still a rasha because he's capable of doing a sin we're going to get there but if right now that's his status right now this person a person could move between rasha and benini and we're going to learn about that in chapter 14 that's true but right now if the status of his mind is right now that he is capable of doing a sin even if it's only once a month once a year and it's a small sin just in his thought then he's a rasha right now because he's capable of doing sin very very high level rasha right now let's do another scenario a person who sins all day long but once a year on Yom Kippur a thought comes into his head which says you know something I should really do teshuva never does it doesn't actually follow through with the teshuva goes back to sinning all year long but once a year the thought pumps into his head you know I probably should do teshuva then this person's a Russia for sure he's misbehaving all day long but is his godly soul inactive his godly soul is very active not very but it's active what's the proof it's active once a year the thought comes in and said maybe I should do teshuva hmm? let's say it's Yom Kippur I don't know this guy's Yom Kippur for somebody else's Purim for somebody else's I don't know just every Wednesday I don't know every Wednesday a thought pops into his head maybe I should change my ways and doesn't right away goes back to doing sins but the fact that there's an idea that pops into his mind every now and again which says maybe I should get better means he's not a complete Russia because there's still his godly soul is still active that says the Altar, but these two extremes, the guy who is capable of sinning once a year, and the guy who has a thought once a year, maybe I should do teshuva, these two people, the two extremes, and then there's people all the way, the, then there's people in the middle, right? Well, obviously the person who, who only sins once a year is better, right? It's better to have the possibility of sinning once a year and the rest of the time you're perfect, versus someone who's terrible all the time and only once a year thinks maybe I should do teshuva. But, here's a, what? I said again? So most people are Russians in this by this by this definition. But it's different. Right. I thought the Russia was having more effort So that's why in chapter one Altar said that a person who has fifty fifty and one on one, we talk about that, that's talking about judgment. But when we talk about the status of the person, if he's capable of sitting, he's a Russia. Well, I'm according to heaven. That's a different story. If we're talking about judging a person, then it's a different story. But now we're talking about what your status is in your heart and in your neshama. So now let, let's take these two extremes, two examples. One person sins all the time, once a year has a thought, maybe I should do teshuva. The other guy on the other extreme never does anything wrong. Once a year, he has a bad thought. Once a year, a bad, a sinful thought. Both of these people, they're very, very far apart. One guy is 99 good, 1% bad. The other guy is 99 bad, 1% good. But both of these people have an active animal soul and an active godly soul. Right? For this guy, it's 99% active godly soul because he's doing everything right. And once a year, he does a sin in his thoughts. So that means his animal soul is still active. For the tzaddik, the animal soul is inactive. doesn't even have that once a year. But this guy, his animal soul is actually active. One is, is still an active part of his life because once a year, he, he's capable of sinning. The other guy, his animal soul takes over him most 90% of the time. But once a year, his godly soul gets active and says, you know, maybe I should do teshuva. So those are, both of these people, the Atreva puts them into one level, the higher level of Russia. In other words, this is a Russia, this is a person who acts negatively once in a while, but both his animal soul and his godly soul are active. And therefore, sometimes he behaves according to the animal soul, and sometimes he behaves according to the godly soul, because they're both very active. Even if it's only 99% and 1% going either way. Do you follow what I just said? Yeah? You follow that? Right? So it could be 99% godly soul, 1% animal soul, or 99% animal soul, 1% godly soul. But either way, it means both godly soul and animal soul are active. And if both godly soul and animal soul are active, Russia. Because the moment your animal soul is active, to, to the point of doing a sin, Russia. Even if it's 99% or 1%. Clear? Then there is an even lower level of Russia. The lower level of Russia is somebody who has gone so far down misbehavior, to the point that he doesn't even have thoughts that come to him and say, maybe you should do teshuva. His godly soul is completely inactive, not gone chas because a Jew is a Jew is a Jew is a Jew. 
And no matter how badly a person behaved, he still has a godly soul. And if he were to walk into a room, he could still be part of the minion. But the godly soul is not active in his conscious mind. It stays in what's called subconscious. When the words of the Alter Rebbe, it's makif. It surrounds his head, not in his head. So he never has an actual thought, maybe I should do teshuvah. That never happens. But there's still a godly soul there. So being selfish influences you being on the shot? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. By what? Like by feelings or by the by action. If I control it, then I'm like abandoning, right? But now we're talking about Russia. But the moment the feelings of selfishness come into action, or thoughts, speech, or action, any of the three clothing, thoughts, speech, or action, in that moment the person becomes a Russia. Which means if I am capable of making my animal selfishness go to my thoughts, speech, or action, I'm, I'm, my status is Russia because I'm capable of giving in to my animal soul in thoughts, speech, or action. Not the same as a Jew. Unless there's a conversion. Unless there's a, a, a conversion according to Allah. Uh, uh, Sorry? So that's called Chaste Umas Aylam. They're from the good amongst the nations. And that's because their animal soul, like we have an animal soul, got elevated to a higher level. But not, not a godly soul though. So let's get back to the Russia. So two levels of Russia. One level of Russia is so far gone, and it's actually a punishment. It's a kind of punishment where the person goes so far gone that he has no conscious thoughts of his godly soul, even though his godly soul is still there. And if he did teshuva, his teshuva would be accepted. And we should actually try to encourage this person to do teshuva because he's still a Jew. He still has a godly soul. But his godly soul, his neshama, never becomes in his conscious mind. Never gets to his conscious mind. That's one type of Russia. Very extreme, down. Very rare. Then there's the other kind of Russia. The other kind of Russia is a very broad spectrum. The other kind of Russia is somebody whose animal soul is sometimes active. Sometimes active in thought, speech, and action. Whether it's once a year or 99% of the year. So long as the animal soul is sometimes active and the godly soul sometimes active in thought, speech, and action, then this is the other kind of Russia. So if I were to ask you, where, were most people, where are most people? In this category of Russia. Most people aren't so far gone that they never have a thought of teshuva. It's very rare. Most people aren't in the category of tzaddik where they have no interest in being selfish. right? So most people are somewhere in this realm where the godly soul is active and they act and think and speak according to the godly soul very often. But their animal soul is also active. So they think, speak, and act according to the animal soul too. Right? So that's where most people are. Before, one second, tomorrow we're going to learn chapter 12 and 13, we're going to learn about the Bainani. And then after that, we're going to get chapter 14 and we're going to think about how you can go from this level of Russia into Bainani. That's going to be the challenge of chapter 14. But first, we have to understand what a Russia is, what a Tzaddik is, what a Bainani is. So today we covered what a Tzaddik is, what a Russia is. Tomorrow we're going to cover what a Bainani is. And then the day after, we're going to discuss how you can go from Russia into Bainani. Are you following? Okay, what do you want to ask? Not exactly. Because even when you're doing a uh, mitzvah, if you are still capable of doing uh, a sin, that means even though right now I'm, my godly soul is active because I'm doing a mitzvah, but my status of my feelings is still a Russia status because I'm capable of giving in to my animal soul. Well, right? If, if, if you control yourself from doing an animal Ah, so if my status is that I'm in control of my, my animal soul, even though it's active, then my status is bainani. And that we're going to learn about tomorrow. Right? Because the Russia is somebody who actually gives into his animal soul and thought, speech, and action. Well, the Benin is someone who's in control. So that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Right. So that means, because you're never like, per, you're never like only animal soul, only godly soul. It's always a mix. So even when you're doing an, a mitzvah, you can have animal soul thoughts, selfish. And even when you're doing something, uh, a sin, your godly soul is still active. You know, in fact, Yalteba writes that even the moment of sin, the godly soul is, is, not, is still faithful to Hashem. 
Right? Because your godly soul didn't stop loving Hashem just because your animal soul is doing a sin. Right? This is why we're so complicated people. Dr. Bill explained to us why we're so complicated. How we have these mixed feelings. And the reason is because we have two souls. And especially, you know, if you're a tzaddik, life is pretty simple. Right? Because you only have one set of feelings. You only have feelings for Hashem. On one or two levels, you know, either your feelings are so great that you, you know, feel like a car who just serves Hashem, or your feelings are so great that you don't have any feelings for the, for the world. You don't have any feelings for selfishness, fine. But your life is pretty simple because you only have one set of feelings. If you're the lowest level of Russia, your life is also simple because you never even have a thought, maybe I should do teshuva. So the person never even has a thought of guilt. So his life is terrible, but it's simple. He only wants to serve the self. But the rest of us, are much more complex. We have this mix of feelings. Right? We have godly soul feelings, all I want to do is serve Hashem. And then I have animal soul feelings, all I want to do is have a good time and be selfish. And these feelings get mixed up very often. But what we're learning today, in chapter 11, is that the moment I am capable of allowing my selfish animal soul to behave, to speak, or to think, then I'm a Russia. Even from a very high level Russia, because I only do it once a year. Following? So tomorrow, God willing, we're going to talk about the Benini. What this means, we're going to do chapter 12 and 13, we're going to talk about the Benini, and what this means, a person who has feelings for, of selfishness, but never gives into it, what that means, what that looks like. And then the day after, when we get to chapter 14, we're finally going to find out how I can go from being Russia, right, because I'm capable of giving into my animal soul, to Benini, where I'm only in control of myself. That's going to come in chapter 14 in two days. Right? So all, everything we learned is a build-up to chapter 14. We learned about what the godly soul is. We learned about what the animal soul is. We learned about the fight between the two of them. We learned about what a tzaddik looks like. We learned about what a rasha looks like. And then we're going to learn about tomorrow what a benni looks like. And then finally, in chapter 14, Dr. is going to tell us how we can go from rasha mode to benni mode. Forever or just At any moment. That's the words Dr. says. At any moment, the person can make that choice. And that, God willing, is coming in two days. But if you become a barony, you become a barony for this second? Or is it like you, you become a barony until you do something wrong? It's a good question. It's a good question. We're going to talk a little bit more about it tomorrow. But it seems, as we're going to see in chapter 14, it seems like a person can bounce in and out. Bounce out, in and out of banning. Right? Because sometimes you're in full self-control and sometimes it slips. And sometimes you're back into full self-control and slips. But we're going to talk more about that when we get to chapter 14. Sounds good?